Hey buddies, Some Nuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you guys how to get started in Vault Hunters. This is something I've been asked a lot while going through my playthrough over on Twitch. And, uh, you know, the mod doesn't quite give you a clear sort of step-by-step -step guide to get into the actual sort of modded part of the game. Uh, unlike some other mods. So here I am teaching you guys exactly what you need to do to get started in Vault Hunters. But getting started is just slightly confusing. And it's very much vanilla. It's very much vanilla until you have beat the Ender Dragon. And, uh, you know, and then you can start progressing into the modded side of the pack. First things first, though. You'll notice that you have five unspent skill points in the top right corner. And these skill points can be spent straight away. If you press H on your keyboard, you'll be taken to this screen. And this is like the whole Vault Hunters breakdown. You've got uh, various statistics here for you. You've got your own stats for like your damage and health, armor, etc., etc. Some other bits and pieces you probably won't understand until a little bit later in your playthrough. You've then got your abilities, your talents, and your research. Now, research is how you start to unlock mods. So like I said, it starts very much vanilla until you start to progress through the mod pack, um, starting with beating the dragon. Now, these are not something you're going to worry about for a little while as well. You'll need to unlock knowledge points, similar to skill points. They'll appear here when you have unlocked them. Until you do so, though, you don't have to worry about these for a little while. So it's your abilities and your talents that you're going to be looking at. And your abilities are essentially activated abilities that you press a button to actually activate. And the talents are generally passive abilities, apart from Twerker, which is kind of an active ability, because although it just passively happens when you crouch. So, what should we spend our first five points on? My recommendation and what I would start with is one level in Dash, two levels in Vein Miner, one level in Experience, and one level in Twerker. And I'll explain why. Now, Dash is an incredibly good ability that you can bind to a keybind. Mine is F, and it's just going to dash you like this. Really nice for mobility. It can also be used with Elytra to give a firework effect, so you can essentially fly without having to use fireworks at all, which is really, really nice. Vein Miner is to help us with early game, well, mining and resource gathering, which will be required to get into the mod pack. And just to make that process a little bit quicker, a little bit less grindy. T taking a level in experience boosts the value of all experience orbs by 50%, which will be very nice for us to gain some levels to do our initial enchanting. And we can gain quite a bit of levels through trading with villagers uh, with this as well. And then another side of it is Twerker. So Twerker, basically when you crouch next to crops, it will grow those crops for you. In Vault Hunters, you can use a hoe to right click the middle of a three by three with a farm, and it will farm all of the uh, farmable resources in there and replant them as well. Now, if you use Twerker alongside that, Twerker will gr uh, grow crops within a small radius around you. In terms of getting started, this can be very useful for getting emeralds and experience from trading with farmers. Because you can essentially crouch here, uh, triggering your uh, Twerker, and then just hold right click with your hoe, and you'll be gaining an absolute buttload of carrots. Uh, fortune will also work with this. So you can put Fortune 3 on this hoe and get even more carrots, even quicker by doing this. Uh, and honestly, guys, this is how I got a lot of my early levels and a lot of my early emeralds from villagers to uh, to get started with the mod pack. Once you've got your abilities set, first thing I would go do is find yourself a village. We've talked about villages, uh, villagers and the value that villagers can bring. So grabbing yourself some villagers at the very beginning is a really good idea. And I do literally mean grabbing yourself some villagers. Yes, in this pack, you can carry villagers in your bag. You can even dual wield them if you wish to, little buddies. But yes, uh, you want to grab yourself some villagers uh, and you bring them back to your base. I would also recommend grabbing any waystones that you find. You won't be able to use them for a little while, but they will be very useful to you a little bit later down the line. These are the villagers that will probably be most useful to you the earliest in the game. However, most villagers provide some value here. Clerics are also good. Leather workers are also good because they can help you provide resources such as saddles that you might need for uh, your vault recipes a little bit later. And that will make a little bit more sense when we get to that in just a sec. So the farmers are great because we're going to be using our hoe and um and our twerker and gaining a bunch of different carrots so we want to find a villager with a carrot trade this guy's got one nice there for us we can cycle trades here if we wish to 
I might want to take a carrot and potato trade because I don't have any beetroot, but I could easily get some potatoes and start trading both carrots and potatoes to this guy. You'll probably have quite a few villagers. I would probably set up two, three, four farmers, um, definitely more librarians, uh, and then like a weaponsmith and an armor smith, etc. Um, because I don't feel like necessarily having to go mine for uh, your initial set of armor and, and tools and stuff is really the most effective way, given that we have Twerker and, and the hoe system to allow us to get loads of emeralds really easily early on. And so, with a bit of time farming, I got myself a full set of diamond armor, a diamond sword, all enchanted, and I haven't really had to leave the area, and we got a bunch of spare diamonds chilling as well. Now, much of this doesn't necessarily have the enchants that I would actually want. In fact, quite the contrary, the enchants are somewhat terrible on most of these, and it's probably going to be the case for you. So, of course, you can't always use the grindstone to remove these enchants, and of course, you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to... Uh, use this method at all. You know, you can go out and just do normal mining, get yourself some diamonds. You can do it the normal way if you want to. So now the next step is to defeat the Ender Dragon. You are one step closer to having officially started Vault. The reason you've done all this is because you are going to need to create yourself a Vault Altar. Now the vault altar can be created with, needs to be created with purple blocks and obsidian and diamonds. Not too expensive, very nice and easy, but this is of course why you need to be able to defeat the ender dragon before you can progress into vault hunters. Because to activate a vault, you'll need a vault crystal from the vault altar, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now you can make purple blocks with, uh, with chorus fruit. So you don't need to do a whole bunch of exploring, find yourself an end city, mine the purple blocks. Um, you can just silk touch uh, the flowers here and you can get yourself some purple blocks that way. However, you may well want to get yourself an elytra. There are other ways to get elytra. In fact, you can just find elytra's loot in vaults, but you might want to spend the time getting yourself some elytra while you're out here getting some purple blocks. Anyway, completely up to you, but moving on to the next step. Now that we've got our vault altar, we'll need to find some vault rock to put into the altar so that the altar can tell us what our recipe will be to turn that rock into a crystal. Vault rock can be found at Y levels 5 to 11, so very low, lower than diamonds, and generally is below the point where lava spawns, so you will want to be quite careful of that when you're mining for it. Now, I tend to go on Y level 6. You can see on the mini-map there, that middle value is number 6. That means this ground level is 5. And then I mine all the way up to 10 there, showing that that would then be 11. So if it does spawn on 5, or it does spawn on 11, I'll be able to see it there in the ceiling or the floor. And I can just strip mine like this, if that's the way that I want to. But I do, of course, also have the uh, vein mine ability. So if you really want to, you can just start plowing through. As well as only spawning between Y levels 5 and 11, they're also rarer than diamonds in that only one ore block can spawn per chunk. Now, it's supposed to be a guaranteed one ore block per chunk. I've noticed in some occasions it seems like there's a maybe a generation issue or something that causes one to not spawn. But honestly, nine times out of ten, if I clear out an entire chunk, I will find one. So... Later on, when you've got your vein mining capabilities and mending and all that good stuff, you can literally just vein mine out a whole chunk of Y level 5 to 11 and find it fairly easily that way. They also have a bit of a telltale glow. So, you know, I'm down here with my torch in my right hand, my dynamic lighting so that it gives out lighting even though it's in my hand. However, Vault Rock actually gives a slight glow. So while I'm vein mining and I'm breaking chunks and, you know, there's nooks and crannies and corners, it's a good idea to periodically check without any light source because you might find that there's an ore hiding in one of these nooks or crannies and you can identify that from the light shown. Fortune does also work with Vault Rock Ore, so if you got yourself some fortune or you can get fortune before mining it, then happy days. And once you've got your Vault Rock, you can pop it into the Vault Altar simply by right-clicking. And as we can see, we've been given our first recipe. And this isn't too bad. Now, there's always going to be one rare element on this corner here. There's always going to be one rare thing, which is a little bit more difficult to get than the other side. This can be saddles, tridents, heart of the sea, nautilus shells. 
It can also be slightly easier stuff like honeycomb or whatever the case may be. I mean, saddles is actually very easy because you can get saddles from leather workers. So some of these rare ones are a massive pain in the butt, particularly like the tridents as an example is a very rough one to get early on. Most of these rare things that you can find in vaults. So generally, if you find things in vaults, hoard it as much as possible. Um, you may well need it in the future, even if it seems like an obscure item. Um, it may well end up being a rare element for your vault altar. So you want to hoard and hold on to everything. And what I mean by everything is actually everything vanilla. So mostly modded blocks, modded bits and pieces and things mostly don't show up in here. Soul beads do appear uh, here as well. Uh, Heart of the Diamond can appear here. So some modded things do, but it's mostly going to be vanilla stuff. When it comes to blocks, it's always going to be vanilla blocks. So like red rock stones, scoria, like all the bunch of random rocks uh, and blocks in this game aren't going to be included. Only vanilla blocks are going to be included in there. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. So we're going to then go out and fulfill this recipe really quickly. Alrighty, now that we've collected all our ingredients, we can just drop these in the vicinity of the vault altar. And uh, it will pick them up. It'll kind of pull them in like a little black hole and pick them up. And we've now got a completed recipe. But there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to apply a redstone signal. I like to use a button and we click the button and it's going to generate our first vault crystal, which is very exciting. So I now have a vault crystal. What the heck do I do with this? Well, we're going to have to venture to the nether because we need to get some blackstone for our vault portal. Now, the vault portal is built pretty much the same way as the nether. In fact, exactly the same way as the end portal, uh, the nether portal except for the fact you're using a blackstone instead of obsidian. Hopefully, if you don't find yourselves a blackstone biome where you can get an abundance, hopefully you find a little pocket like this or something uh, where you can get at least enough, oh, at least enough for your altar, of which you'll require a minimum of 10. Once you've got your blackstone portal set up, you are pretty much good to go. All right, let's get it. Wait, no, do not go in just yet. We want to make sure that we're very prepared. Entering a vault is dangerous if we die within the vault we lose everything we went in there with we cannot get it back in any way shape or form it's gone forever so we want to make sure we're very prepared for entering a vault additionally there is no natural healing in vaults you do not heal due to saturation from eating okay so the only way to gain health in vaults is with skills abilities health potions and uh, things like leeching on weapons in future. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. So at these early stages, you're going to be relying heavily on health potions. And because of that, and because, you know, Iskall doesn't want it to be too easy, health potions have been changed, okay? Health potions require... Health potions require a golden apple. And golden apples require blocks of gold. So, golden apples are, they're gold. Like, <laughs> you want them, you need them. Gold is great, so, and grab as much gold as you can. Grab as much gold as you can find. If you find any golden apples, hold on to them, keep them. And you're going to want to brew yourself some potions. You're probably going to want some regular instant health potions too. And some, potentially, some splash ones as well. The splash ones, you'll usually lose a little bit of the healing value, but they can be used in a pinch and also damage undead. And the potions of healing do a little bit more value, but obviously you have to take the time to drink them and do that in a little bit of safety. You're going to want to bring at least four, five, six, seven, eight potions. I mean, if you're cracked out of your mind, awesome at the game, you can run in there with no potions and just make sure you receive as little damage as possible. Grab all that you can and make sure you get out without dying. But if you want to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more intelligent about it, get yourself at least a few potions ready to go. And then you can jump into the vault. Now, when you get in there, I'm not going to show you what it looks like in there. Um, it's essentially going to be a procedurally generated dungeon built out of rooms uh, and then connector hallways between the rooms. And there's chests and loot everywhere. Your objective is to go in there, grab the chests, grab as much loot as you can. There's also obelisks. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We're passing the sort of how to get started stage. Um, but essentially, each vault has, a, has a, a, an objective. At pre-level 25, the objective is always going to be the, to kill a boss. In the bottom left corner, when you enter the vault, um, above where the abilities are, what well, basically where I'm hiding, where I'm sitting on the webcam, um, there will be a number of uh, obelisks. 
which are just a little icon of a little obelisk that'll be grayed out. And you will find obelisks with white pixels above them inside the altar, inside the vault. You want to activate these obelisks. And when you activate the last obelisk, so it can be anywhere between three and six, once you uh, activate the last obelisk, it will summon the boss. Make sure you're 100% ready to do this. If you find something called a power bar in the vault, that's a that's a a, a food that gives you a power a, a power up to your damage of fifty percent. I would I would advise consuming that and then fighting the boss. Um, and you want to make sure that you've got you know full health when you're starting to do that, and preferably maybe a po health potion or two as well. You if you also get hearty apples, they're apples that kind of look like a heart shape. If you get those while you're doing your first vault run as well, those give you one extra permanent temporary heart so it adds one yellow heart like like um absorption but that doesn't disappear until you lose that you can get up to six from hardy apples so if you have any hardy apples i would consume those hardy apples before you do your first boss as well otherwise you can always just jump out through the vault um portal the way that you came in so if you go in and you don't find the the obelisks to do the boss or you're too low health you don't want to fight the boss you can jump back out called bailing you can bail out through the original portal that you walked in in the vault and it started raining <clears throat> i think i've covered how to get started pretty well i don't think there's anything that i've missed guys if there's anything that i have missed uh that's quite important please feel free to drop them in the comments below if any of you guys have any questions i'll be happy to answer those i respond to all of my comments and if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this consider subscribing i go live on twitch every day except, mon except monday and friday and it would be great to see some of you guys there that's twitch.tv forward slash some nuts guy. I also run an SMP server from that Twitch channel. If you want to get access to the Vault Hunters SMP that I run, then you'll need to join the Twitch stream and earn 3,000 channel points to get access to the whitelist. Um, obviously, if you have any questions of that on stream, feel free to ask, and I'll be happy to help. Regardless, guys, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.